Hello class. Today we're going to discuss radiographic body positions. It's important to understand radiographic body positions because they are the terms that we will be using during lecture so that you can know how to manipulate your patient into the correct position for the radiographic image requested. Radiographic body positions are a little more specific than the general body positions we have already discussed. Do you remember them? That's right, supine, prone, erect, seated, upright, Trendelenburg, Fowler, and recumbent. Very good. All right, so let's get started. The first position we're going to talk about is the lateral. Now the lateral refers to one of the patient's sides being closer to the image receptor than the other. This can be discussed whether the patient is lying on the table or at the upright wall bucky. So in this image here, it is indicated that the patient's right side is closer to the image receptor, therefore this is a right lateral x-ray. This is also known because we have a right marker placed on the image receptor so that when the image is actually produced, you'll see the finished product that also has a right marker on there that will be indicating that it was a right lateral x-ray. So the next position we're going to be talking about is the oblique position. Now this one's a little bit tricky because the oblique is anywhere between the patient lying in a supine or prone position. You remember supine is when the patient's lying on their back or the prone position where the patient's lying on their stomach and the lateral. So it's not with the patient's back flat on the surface and it's not with the patient in a true lateral. It's anywhere between those two. So basically between a zero degree angulation and a 90 degree angulation is an oblique. With the patient oblique, there is one side of the patient's body that was closer to the image receptor and either the anatomical or anterior surface or the posterior or dorsal surface is going to be closer to the image receptor. So when we're looking at this image up here on the top, the patient is in an LPO. The LPO stands for left because this is the left side of her body. The post, the P stands for post, which is posterior because her back is up against the image receptor. And the O is the oblique. So it's an LPO, left posterior oblique. So that means her left posterior aspect of her body is in the closest contact to the image receptor in comparison between the right and the left side, the anterior and the posterior side. So when we look down here at this bottom picture, what do you think that patient is, what position do you think that patient's in? Well, let's look and see. This is her left side and this is her right side. So what part is closer to the table? Her left side. So it is a left. Is it the anterior surface of her body that's closer to the table or the posterior surface of her body that's closer to the table? It's the posterior and she's oblique because she's not flat on her back and she's not in a true lateral position. So this also is an LPO position. So as you can see, whether the patient is standing in the erect or upright position or if the patient is laying on the table, either way she is in an LPO position. Okay, how are we doing so far? We're gonna move on now. Looking at this patient, this one's a little tricky. The patient is laying in a recumbent position because as you remember, recumbent means any position lying down. So the patient could be recumbent if they're supine, lying on their back, prone if they're lying on their stomach, or if they're lying on their side. So, this patient is recumbent. Now let's look and see what side they're lying on. So. This would be his left side, and this would be his right side, correct? All right, so the patient is in a left lateral position. Now, we don't call this a left lateral position because of the way the tube is positioned. Now, if you look right here, this is indicative of the x-ray beam entering into the patient's anterior surface. So the, the x-ray beam is a horizontal beam, and whenever you have the patient lying down on the table or on their stretcher with a horizontal x-ray beam that is known as a decube position. Now, 
it is a decube position, but we have to be a little bit more specific because we have several different decube positions. Now, the cubitus position has to have, as I said before, the patient lying down in a recumbent position, and you have to have a horizontal beam on the x-ray tube. So the beam is actually coming across the, the x-ray table. So this patient would be said to be in a left lateral decubitus position. Okay, moving forward. Now we have the patient in different recumbent positions. The one at the top is considered to be what? Supine, very good. And the one at the bottom, the patient is flipped over onto their stomach so they are known to be in a prone position, very good. Now, as you see here, we have the x-ray beam once again coming across, but now it's going into the lateral surface of the patient's body. Remember in the previous one, it was entering in the anterior surface. Is that gonna make a difference? Well, let's see. So, we have a horizontal beam. The patient is in a recumbent position, so it has to be what? A decube, very good. Now. It is a decube, but we have to be specific with which type of decube. This one is known as the dorsal decube. It's known as the dorsal because the patient is lying on their back. And as you remember, dorsal also means the posterior aspect or the patient's back. So this one would be known as a dorsal decube position. The one on the bottom, let's see how good you are now. What position is the patient in? Prone, very good. Now that the patient is in a prone position, what type of decube would be indicative of this image here? Well, we know it can't be a lateral decube because the patient isn't lying on their side. We know it can't be a dorsal decube because that is this picture up here. The patient is in a ventral decube, and it's called ventral because once again, ventral means anterior surface, and the patient is lying on their stomach. So this is a ventral decube position. Okay, so wrapping it up, let's see how good your skills are now. Now, we don't have the, the um, beam indicating here, but this is a horizontal beam. So if this was a horizontal beam, what type of 